I actually met him when I was like 11, around that time, because he came I to I took Hanford. him to the Neverland Ranch. What the <laughs> Relax, <laughs> relax. That <laughs> <laughs> churros. He couldn't get enough of those churros. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hola, mis amigos. You're listening to Oh My God, Hi, Hijo de Dios. Hola. With me, George Lopez. Porque sabe que let's do the show. Porque I got a lot of things to do. Thing I got to go to that dry cleaner. Here by Kid Phelps. Se pegó la cabeza. I got to go get some Neo Spor Sporin Paul. You know what George is? Oh, I'm sure he's around here somewhere. What's his name? George. Lopez. George Lopez. Oh, my God. OMG. OMG. Hi. Oh, my God. Hi. I went back and did stand-up this weekend. And, uh... Um, How'd it go? It's fucking hard. I don't remember it being so hard. <laughs> <laughs> I, swear God, I swear to God. It's like, you know, if, if you don't work out in 435 days and then they go, welcome to the LA Marathon. Pop! <laughs> the fucking by the third block. <laughs> <laughs> it, you know, after the first three shows, I sat, first two shows, I, or after the first, second night, I sat there and I went, man, this is, if I never think I loved it, because, you know, I, I don't really show a lot of respect to it or talk about it that much. But I cared so much that it made me realize I do love it because, we, like a woman, if a woman had left you and you were trying to get her back, you would be having the same conversation, like, what do I need to do, man? I need to, like... And sure. It's the first time in my life, I've been doing it 42 years, that I remember Lee Trevino told me one time, you know, George, I finally, you know, I got older and I can't play as well. And he says, never happened to me in my life before. And I would say those like it's harder than I thought it was and that I wasn't as prepared as I should have been. That's not going to be on the podcast. We're taking that fucking shit out. No, kidding. <laughs> no, no, no. You got to put it in there. So let's see. Let's see. You got it? All right, yeah, let me show you. Let me show you. So it's a really basic video. It's just me Fucking doing kids, like eh? how George Lopez would look if he was looking for his car in the parking <laughs> lot. <laughs> yeah, I would, it's, it, that's all it is. It's just yeah. like. Don't say it like that. Fuck what it's all it is. That's all. No, nah, because it's like <laughs> every little bitch. thing, like how George Lopez would look like ordering. He'd just be like, you got the number four with medium fries or, you know, that's basically all it is. It's so I did like three of those on TikTok. And, and then, and, but what was what was the big thing of, of about, like what what launched when launched you? So I do I, I I do stuff where I like impersonate teachers, little like teacher like movements, and then I do like news reporter. I have a character named Junior, who's just like you know like the where's my hug at guy, who's like where's my hug at, you know that like that the flirtatious <laughs> guy. Okay. So I I you do, do any like, you do do any cochinas? No 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 not yet no. Nah. Okay. Uh, you get a wig. We're gonna stop and get you a wig and some But they go to Lobster Village. So so um. So, you moved, just moved to, remember I DM'd you? I think Mayan's yeah. the one who told me about, he goes, hey, this guy's doing you, like, yeah. on TikTok, and then. What's your name? What's your ad? My name is Leo Gonzalez. Leo Gonzalez. Nah, Leo Gonzalez. No, no, you want to know something real quick? When I was, because uh, I, I was obsessed with George when I was little, not no more, nah. Uh, when uh, when I was when I was a little kid, gotcha. I used to look at my name, which is Leo Gonzalez, and I was like L G G L backwards, eleven letters in both names, bruh. Sure nah, when I was ten or eleven, I was like, that was my like, I like laid it out. I'm like, look, one day we're gonna meet. Like, look, L E O G O N Z G E O R J. Like for real. Wait, that's so crazy. I was like, yeah, I always thought about that. And then I I actually met him when I was like eleven, around that time because he came. I to took Hanford. him to the Neverland Ranch. What the <laughs> Relax, relax. relax. <laughs> that churros. He couldn't get enough of those churros. Uh, into that night, into right. the way, the middle of the night. Thank you. <laughs> nah, yeah. And so. then Michael Jackson's like, "Hey, you got a too, too, too much for me. I'm going to my room. Yeah, Which one? Uh, the real one or the one behind one. the fucking clothes? <laughs> the uh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And, and you know, the thing with see, you're not. He's not a stand-up comedian. So, stand-up comedians don't. I don't know. They never give me any. Respect you. I mean, you have to earn it. No, but they never say. But you see a guy that was 11 saw my show, and then all of a sudden, you know, he's like, "Hey, I, you know, I, I, I liked him. I was influenced by him. It's, it means more here because this guy was where were you in Fresno and I was in Hanford. And he, yeah, oh, I love Hanford. And he's not a, no, he's don't. not a comedian. Uh, I do. I worked in uh, the theater yeah. in Hanford yeah, yeah, all the yeah. time. 
No, and the thing is, like, I couldn't afford the show because I we didn't have a place to live, and and so when you were in Hanford, we had only I had only heard like somebody was like George Lopez is staying at this hotel, and I was like in eighth grade, so I got on my scooter with one of my with one of my homegirls, and we went over there, and true story, like for like. He he. There was like two limos there. I was like two flex, but there was two limos there, and he got in one of them, like in the back, and he drove like they drove off, and then not even joking, it was like four of us kids there. The limo leaves like two blocks. We see it, and it turns around, and it comes right back. And George came outside, and he was like, "All right, like, how you doing?" I was like, "Bro," and I was like, "Nah, it, it was crazy." It I was, went back. You went back. Yeah, I took the picture. I'll show you the picture right now too. Well, you guys talk a look. For Those me. were the years I was fucking put through most of the No, no. <laughs> no, no. No, I was always kind of kind. It was crazy. It was crazy. Uh, you know, I think, you know, I mean, when you're a professional, you have a lot of different personalities. I don't know if, if anybody ever has one true personality. I think back in the day they did. Like yeah. the old man, they go, fuck that old man's fucking mean. Eh? That, that was his personality. But I think now with everything and the way things are, you're different to some people, you're different to other people, and I think that's the problem people try to be one personality. Wow, look at that 10. photo. This is, uh, look at it. So I was a little lighter at that point. You can see that Ferris wheel in the back. Where, hey, yeah. where, where's your hand at, George? <laughs> yeah, where's the uh, hand at? Can we right, get a right, right, right there. <laughs> <laughs> we zoom out? Can <laughs> see a puppet? Yeah. Uh, uh, on my lap? Can I say, yeah. No, no, no. That, yeah, that's around, what, six, 2005? Yeah, 2000. And I was like 2007 or eight. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was like right before high school for me. It was crazy. Did people give you shit because you liked me in school? No, no, and that's the thing. Like, like Kiss, I like in, Kiss. They call me a Kiss freak, and all you know, I was a big Kiss fan. And well, not because it was you. It was because like all my friends were all like little Cholillos, and so it was all. It, so and it was but, funny stuff. Like it wasn't that was the stuff that nobody had ever heard. Like why are you crying? Right. The TV right, show yeah. was. So it was like every day, like at school, like I, my, that was how I kind of like built myself in eighth grade because everybody just nicknamed me George <laughs> Lopez. And so, you know, one, uh, one thing that I was like, you know what, let me not tell you. I don't even want to tell you because you're, it's you and I'm with the uh, officer of the law. <laughs> but when I was uh, in eighth grade, my little Trilio friend, still got his quet down there, was, <laughs> there was a, uh, a big George Lopez poster because you, uh, when you, the, you aired on like the, one of the, the local channels. And it had like the cast right there. So my friends, I wasn't with them to for like as a birthday gift in October, they grabbed it, they cut out your face, and they, they gave it to me as a gift. Oh. And so that was illegal. <laughs> but they gave it to me as a gift and I took that for like Halloween I wore it, and it was like the best thing ever, but like <laughs> it was yeah. <laughs> Good. Wow. Well, Fuck a Halloween costume now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there you so, go. No. That, that's the influence you had. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, back when you started, and you're, and you're saying, why are you crying? Why are you crying? And yeah. everything you said, uh, to me, I wasn't a little kid. That was all real. Yeah. That's that's the way I was brought up. You even had my suegros, you know. And right. They loved your, and, and the stories you'd tell, you know, hey, don't forget, bring me a plate. You're going right. to the wedding? No, that's Susie. Yeah, yeah. She getting married in white? Yeah, yeah. Pa and but yet bring me a plate you know she would it was it was so funny it, you know to me it was real i know man and that's like you know i think when you let's say if you build if i'm thinking about it right the analogy would be like if you if you built a if you built a company but you started in the garage mm -hmm. like bezos you know they have that thing where he's sitting yeah. there and he was sold old books and it says Amazon is in the garage. Yeah. So you think about those those days and you think about, it was just my grandmother. My grandma would say, you know, hey, you hear who's getting married? Who? Uh, yeah. Again? <laughs> <laughs> I go to the wedding. I went to the first two. She should wear <laughs> fucking six fucking kids. She should wear a white dress with a fucking black sleeve and a fucking hole in the middle. <laughs> like my grandmother went zero to 60 and I would just be like, that's it. And you know, in and a little, you know, it's funny, man, because I think about it, a little bit of what happened this last weekend at that club was a loss of direction. And then when I was in New York and I was really fucking miserable with my stand up, and then this guy came to see me and he said, Hey, man, can I give you some constructive criticism? And I said, Yeah, of course. And he's like, You know, when I see you, I don't know what you like, I don't know what you don't like, I don't know what, what your family's about, I don't know where you're from, I don't know your politics. 
He says, man, you need to get shit that people can relate to you because it's sort of mundane kind of stuff. And then I, he goes, who in your family is like funny? And then that night I walked back from New York to Caroline's to the hotel and I said, shit, it's got to be my grandmother. So over the next day during the day, I stayed in there and I wrote shit. And when I went out, it changed the direction of my life, the life of my family, my career. That one thing that said, like, who is it? You know, it was, and it was my grandmother, Disneyland. You already went. You don't remember when you scratched your back of the fence when I pulled you under? That kind of shit. That <laughs> fucking sneak, we were sneaking into everything. <laughs> we're sneaking in everywhere. Well, I'm glad you're here, man. I mean, no. This would be a good, with that, got a good cold thing right here, huh? This is good. Uh, this is like one of those commercials for uh, uh, when Forrest Lawn, the three generations of Latinos. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> so. Here's what's happened since Gil, Gil has been on, oh my God, high. So he wasn't on social media at all, at right? All. That's right. Facebook page. And what did you use it for? Like looking at pictures of kids and just, nah. just, wife. No, just friends sending no kids, me stuff. Latino, update, like yeah, just no. update friends. Hey, yeah. this is what's going on. I wouldn't even add friends of my kids yeah. because at that time I was I was a working cop. I I, I didn't want to, I don't know what you're doing. But it could, be, it could be, it could be. I mean, we use it for entertainment, but it, it, what what is Facebook like when you're not when you're not trying to you're just trying to stay in touch with your family? What's that like? You look at it every day? Well, yeah, I do. I look at it every day, and it's just staying in touch with family and friends, see what people are doing. You know, you all of a sudden somebody pops up that you haven't seen in years, and there you go. You you, you talk to them. It's just totally friends, and that's all it was to me until this thing yeah. broke, and then it it just got. It, wilder than my wildest expectations. You know, when somebody would, if somebody was a comedian and they did like the Tonight Show and, you know, like Drew Carey, like he got mm -hmm. called over to the couch by Johnny Carson and then the next day you're a big star. What it is now with, with all of the streaming services and all of the, you know, channels and yeah. shows, like there's thousands of fucking things to watch. But when those thousand things to watch become, what was it called? The... Night, what, was it, what was the official title? Night Stalker Search for a Serial Killer, yeah. I think, or Hunt for a Serial Killer. Mm -hmm. So Netflix, amongst all the other ones, but Netflix is still the place that people go to. Uh, and somehow they know that you're Chicano, that you're alone. Like, are you still watching? Yeah. <laughs> okay, crying. So when that comes out, it's, it's fucking trending all over the world. And here you are. Yeah. And there you are, and now people see you. And now what was small, the circle is now, like you said, you've been getting messages from everybody all over the place. Yeah. And what's it, let me ask that, what's, what's it been like since, what do you, what's it been like for you personally? Not like. Just time consuming, a lot of time consuming because I wake up in the morning, I wake up early and I look at my iPad. I, I take it with me everywhere, I open up my iPad and there's all kinds of messages you gotta read, you gotta respond. And, and I've told my wife, I have to do this because I don't want people to think that I'm better than anybody. You know, I'm not an asshole. So you answer all the people that... I answered everybody, unless there's something on there specifically, you know, like... I, I even answered one guy that admittedly says, hey, I'm a crook. Mm -hmm. He says, I'm like a Robin Hood. He says, I steal from the rich, but I give it all back to the poor. That's what I'm doing. You know, I take money from rich guys. And I said, well, thanks. I hope our paths don't cross. He says, hey, don't worry. Like white collar or? No, no. He wasn't no white collar. And he just said, uh, I just want to say. The criminal. Yeah. He says, I'm a criminal. You're not. You caught criminals. But that's the best documentary I've ever seen. And my hat's off to you. You're good. One of these days, I hope I get a chance to meet you. I said, well, I hope I don't become one of your victims. He says, no way. I just take money over here to give to the poor. But. That's all I do, and you believe that bullshit. I don't know. I never, never talked to the guy. I don't trust anybody. But you do know. people give money to the poor anymore? Like, would a guy rob and? Those are his words. He ain't coming out here. Hey, no. Well, he didn't tell you where he was from, though. Yeah, he did. But a matter of fact, he just said, "Hey, I'm gonna be." He's not from the. He's not even from the United States. Mm -hmm. I remember that. I don't know what country he's from. And he told me. Uh, he sent me a message. He said, "I'm gonna be going out." Uh, Who's more notorious? They have those do the the. That's some pretty, pretty wild guys in England, you know. Jack the Ripper wasn't Jack the Ripper from there. Jack the Ripper, you know, they Richard wrote on a wall, Jack the Knife. I had to ask Richard. I said, Hey, what does Jack the Knife mean? 
He said, that's just another name for Jack the Ripper. He told me that. Wasn't that from McDonald's that dude who was playing the piano? No, it's Mac the... Mac the Knife. <clears throat> no. Remember they had a dude that was playing the piano? Like Jack in the Box had the clown that has a family, and then McDonald's tried to do where the where the hamburger, I don't know. Well, no, that I don't remember. I thought it was better about the music, the song. Nah. So, so anybody, uh, Mac the Knife. Max, no. Mac the Knife. Mac the Knife. The, uh, the thank you guys. He probably left the fucking monito in his car in the back window. <laughs> the, uh, uh, um, and how are you enjoying that? Do you, is it is it fun? For, is, how's your wife enjoying it, it? It's enjoyable for me, more enjoyable for me because I get to see for the first time in my career, uh, first time in life. I, I've always my wife has been the wind beneath my wings. Right. She always allows me to walk in front. You get the attention. You do this because of this documentary. People are asking her for autographs. They're recognizing her, and people are going up and saying thank you. You stole the whole show. You know the the whole documentary. Was, and so she's getting accolades that she so justly deserves. Well, you know, I mean, it affected your whole family. Like, you know, your family moved out and you were there and everybody wasn't safe and your friends even, you know, yeah. in the law enforcement. And um, so with, with, with regard to that, fuck yeah, man, because like. Sometimes criminals go after, you know, sure, criminals they're, they're, go after them. He, he said he was by my house. We found some shoe Fucking prints. A, man. Now, it wasn't the Avia shoe prints. As it turns out, it probably was the Stadia because we hadn't seen the Stadia yet, which were concentric circles, and little dots all over the bottom of the shoe. Right. But a week before he was arrested, right after a mission vehicle, we found some uh, shoe prints around my house that shouldn't have been there. And so <sighs> then we got some. We got some people watching my house. That shit is crazy, My family man. wasn't there anymore, but I was still there. And so we had people watching uh, my house. We, we, we got some coverage for it. So it was all good. Uh, my kids are loving it because they're getting, my kids at that time were 7, 10, and 13. And they're getting so many, you know, and, and two of them are really into the social media stuff. Mm. And they're getting messages from kids they haven't seen that, since elementary school, you know, hey, man, we had no idea your dad did this because we didn't talk about it. You no, know, but I would then. say I would say that for culturally, you know, for somebody like you to be the the front and center person, that it, it means a lot. It shouldn't just be actors or or comedians no. or entertainers. It should be people like people like you. And probably the best thing that has come out of this for me is to hear from people. Uh, in our culture, I'd say the pobreza, you know, the poor mm -hmm, people mm -hmm. that don't get attention to anything, and they're just reaching out and saying thank you. Yeah. We now have someone we could look up to. You represented us well. We're so proud. Thank you. And uh, that touches me. Yeah, that does. Are you sure it's not part of that beer touching? <laughs> <laughs> so, you already finished that one? Hey, where's, That's a chingo as uh, a kid right here, hey, man. Hey, he wants to be like me. You're out your way, coming over here. that fucking three drinks. Eh? <laughs> where's Be Real at? <laughs> hey, oh. So, um, what, what did you think of, uh, of, of, of Be Real, like, uh, as a person and, and that show? Because that show, Grant, that show did good, huh? Yeah, I think our second best performer won. All right. Yeah. And then... Uh, <laughs> So, what did you think of him? Are you, are you, can I ask you if you use marijuana for anything? No, no. Okay, you're clean. You just yep. drink. Just drink a lot. Uh, nah, got him. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> All right. So, so tell me what you think of it, because because uh, you have, you know, and it's funny because I think the thing that co that connected us again was that this weekend I took a gummy to to sleep, and it gave me anxiety before the show. I'm not doing that shit anymore. Like I didn't feel good. I didn't feel. I felt. I had anxiety, and I'd never had it, and I think it was because I used that fucking thing to go to sleep that it wasn't out of my system. I almost canceled the second show. I'm like, I'm not canceling the show. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> the fucking gummy, goddammit. <laughs> fuck it. I was like, oh, fucking crazy, eh? I had no idea. Number one, because of my age, because I didn't follow him, because I didn't do my homework before I came down here, I didn't know who Be Real was. Then I heard he was a rap star. He's a rapper. Yeah. And so we sat down here, and what I've written on my social media, right? I thought he was uh, very articulate, very intelligent, knew his, very knowledgeable when it came to the flower, or is it? 
cannabis, or as he says, the flower. The flower. Uh, and it was a real pleasure. It was really nice meeting him. And, and he's nothing more than another guy, you know. And, and he was very nice to me. And I was very excited. My grandkids were so excited. Uh, and and it was he was really genuinely sincere. And he had nice things to say about the sheriff's department. He did. Yes. And the way he, versus LAPD. You know, I'm going to tell you that, you know, being from here and dealing with the Foothill Division, that was the division that mm-hmm. they would call, and, um, you know, the Rodney King stuff and all that stuff that, I had no, I mean, it's, and it's not that we we're criminals, but there was always cops around our football games, sure. around the school, you know, come and break up parties. And one of the things that's most shocking to me is that the sheriffs were in that position in the LAPD, like the sheriffs were in more of a position of authority and LAPD was not. Like, I had no idea about that. And I don't think anybody even really knows that, that the sheriffs were the ones to look out for and the LAPD was the ones that you could bullshit. Mm. Well, yeah, nice thing to say, and, and I've written nothing but uh, nice things about him. I was so excited. I, I really was. I got all excited because uh, within the past week, I got a message that he's now following me. And I'm saying, wow, this is huh. a guy, you know, it's kind of like you, you know, travels, performs, yep. big-time guy, and yet he's awesome, following me. And he said he was there if I ever need anything, you know, if, if I needed. So it, it was just, it was nice. Good dude. Yeah, I'm glad because, you know, um, as people get older, I think that the, the CBD aspect of someone's, you know, physical stuff works. You know, Mexicans, oh, okay. all, all our grandmothers used it. Sure. And then the old tequila bottle with the leaves in there, and then they would rub the alcohol, which is like, that was number one for day one. They oh, did sure. That. You know, and uh, so I think that uh, as we get older, that, that, that weed, but listen, that dude's another type of of marijuanero. Ain't that dude, that dude, smoke shit. When when I went to go do his podcast, they smoked two fucking joints. I found one in my car. I smoked that much, and I was out of my mind. I can do the two fucking things like that. Well, I, I've seen some of his posts, and every post Man. that I see is filled with smoke. And, I don't know how they fucking hey, do, how hey, you do they, that. I don't know because I don't use. If they do it, more power to them. As long as Nobody's going out of there and driving all jacked up. It's, it's all cool. I don't care what they do. It's a big business, man. I, it, it's big business. So, so um, who got you on social media? And how easy was it for you to, to, to get on? It, it was a, a good friend of mine, Mike Beltran, who's a referee yep. and a good friend, member of the Sheriff's Department. We've been friends for years. What's uh, your handle? Uh, Real Gil. Real, Real Gil. Gil. Real Gil Carrillo. Real Gil Carrillo. Yes. On everything? Like, that means that it's not a good name. Eh? When he says on everything, that means like, like fuck. No, is it like Instagram or Twitter? Or Instagram. Like Instagram. Are you on Twitter too or no? No. No Twitter. One thing at a time. I haven't even. Yes. Real Gil Carrillo. 815. Five. You better not be following. You better be following me. Or we'll probably get down right now. Oh, he is. Yeah, right. yeah, he's got some good. Are those all your posts right there? Oh, yeah. Let's see if he, let's see if he has me in there. Because God, I started this kid out. Yeah, I just made a, a, a responded to one, that post that I tell you they put out on your behalf of the girl in the Peace Council. Yeah. Tell me what that, oh, and he's, you're from there too, right? From Fresno area? Yep. So, so Gil was, tell me what you, ta- let's talk well, about that. I, I, I saw a post just yesterday and it really touched my heart. Uh, it's a Latino family. They're Mexicans out working the Peace Council. And their daughter had just graduated and she's out there with her family in her cap and oh, gown, the, yeah, 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 and it touched me to show she would show her mom and dad, and uh, it meant everything to me. Yeah, all I wanted to do was make my dad proud. My mom, I had six sisters. My mom was always proud of me. I was, you know, yeah. she, she, I could do no wrong in her eye. But my dad, I wanted to make him proud. Yeah. Now this girl at this young tender age, with a world in front of her persevered, graduated. Was it high school or college? Hi, high school. And yet she's out there uh, yeah. so her parents could be proud of her. And God bless her. You know, uh, so you had six sisters? You don't have a brother? No, no brothers. And S- Six sisters. What was your relationship with like with your father? My dad. Was he a loving father? Was he, he my tough? Dad, my dad loved me. 
I loved him, but we didn't talk much. You know, it was, you know, the day before he died, I, oh, I, I just had to go up and tell him I never said I love you. Mm. So I asked everybody to clear the room in the hospital. I said, Dad, and I grabbed his hand. I said, I got to tell you something. I've never s- said this to you before. He says, what? I said, I love you, Dad. And my dad, holding on to my hand, said, me too, son. Man. And, and so he didn't say, I always <sighs> wanted to hear him say I love you. And I, and I tried everything in my, my what is that, within though? me to be to make him proud of me. So the mm-hmm. ne- I told my sister, one of my older sisters that, and the next day after he passed away the next morning, and the next day uh, my sister was and my mom were going through his stuff, and he had a little steel box a little, and opened up that box, and she says, you want to know you didn't hear your dad say he loved you, how much he loved you? Here is the deed to the house, the insurance mm-hmm. papers, funeral arrangements, $10,000 cash. Every important document he had was in that box wrapped up in this newspaper article. And it's I'm incredible. It's, it's an article about me when I was in incredible. Vietnam yeah. helping to start an orphanage over there. Mm. And I was asking for help from the people of uh, Pig Rivera. Wow. says that's how much he loved but how come he couldn't how come he couldn't tell you it was a different culture back then you know right they, does your dad tell you that he loves you we said it maybe uh two months ago for the first time on the phone and what what made him say it um i, I there was some stuff going on with my, with my mom and and i was like I, w- I was struggling over here and he was just like well Okay, but what is it culturally, man? I, I, what, I don't what, know. What, I, what I thought it? he was going to say it because I was blasting him on social media. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying I'm still waiting. <laughs> but, how, but how come? What, what What is that, though? I mean, uh, I you guess, know, Oscar De La Hoya was chasing, still is, his father's still alive. And they just, I don't, what, what is it in them? It's, and and it's, not, it's not like there's a, a million people that do and just a handful that don't. Nobody does. You know, I, I will tell you. Uh, when I was transferring from station to uh, this headquarters gang unit, they did an evaluation. You get your evaluation, and I was evaluated as being an outstanding. I had never received an outstanding evaluation. So I went to my mom's house, and I showed it to her. And my dad was already sick with cancer. He had two or three of his brothers from New Mexico out here visiting him at the time. And he's just sitting there, and my mom says, Mira, your, your son. And he read it, and he said, I'm proud of you, son. Mm. That's the first time he had ever said that, never in my life. And she says, she looked at him and my mom, you know, she was my protector. She just jumped in there. She says, you mean it took 29 years of life and somebody else to say how good your son was before you could say you were proud of him? And he said, no, that's not it at all. He said, not telling him that made him want to work harder. That was part Mm. of becoming a man. True. And I wanted him to work hard. He says he's accomplished that. And I'm sitting there internally. I'm saying, oh, good one. You're quick on your feet, Dad. That's a good he response. Did, yeah, that's right. And sp- especially in front of your brothers. Mm-hmm. Following year, he's now gone. His boss uh, his boss was the father of S- Supervisor Mike Antonovich. Mickey was his, yep. my dad's boss. Yep. They were best friends. And Mickey called my mom's house and said, hey, can you have Gilbert come down and pick up uh, Everett's Christmas gift? Every year gave him the same thing, wow. a turkey and a bottle of whiskey. Wow. And he gave it to all the employees. He says, have him come pick it up. So I went down there, and I went into this little construction office, and there's three or four guys sitting in there. One of them looked up, and he says, you must be Carrillo's boy. And I said, yes, sir. And he says, oh, it's a pleasure to meet you. My name's Lino. I'm I'm Negro. I'm Blinky. You know, and they had, yeah. I said, I've never had the honor of meeting you guys, but I heard, your, I heard your names, my dad. And, he's, and one of them says, you know, your dad was so proud of you mm. from the time you went into the army. Then you come out, you started college. He says, and then you became a cop. Olvídate. He couldn't stop talking the, about you. And, but what is it in the in the what is it in the what do you think it is, Grant? Does your dad tell you he love your mom? What, but what is it? Because it, it's not. It's not I love you, and then you have to talk for ten more minutes. It's just saying I love you, yeah. and that's it. It's like, I love you, okay, and what else? Oh, you know, the reason. Even yeah. that, is it vulnerability? Is it? I think it's vulnerability. Nope, nobody yeah, told it's, them. It's probably because they'll fucking start crying if they tell you, and they man. don't want to do that. I don't know. My dad, uh, to this day, I think is the wisest man I've ever met. But he raised, there were 11, 10, 10 siblings in his family. And his, his father died at an early age. 
Then he got his mom got married again. Stepdad came in and tried to hit on somebody in the family that he shouldn't have, and they run him out of Dodge. So my dad became the father for the right. family at an early age. He took care of all of them. Then he got married to my mom, and he had seven kids. He was out here in L.A. now. Right. And he did everything, kept everybody in my family out of jail, and kept a roof over our house and fed us. And my dad, I never asked my dad for something I really didn't need or want. The only thing I, I, I asked him for that I really didn't need was a saxophone. I wanted to play sax when I was wow. a kid. And he made it happen. But I never lacked for anything. You got you. How did he get you a sax? He rented it. He rented, rented a sax so I could start playing it. And once he saw that I was going to continue playing it, things were going good, he bought it Man. for me. Mm -hmm. And so I played for years. And it, it was, uh, That's a, he, he did everything. He never told me as a teenager, you know, because at 17 I went into the Army. But before then, he never told me to do anything. He would hint or give me a consejo, yeah. hey, yeah. Maybe, maybe you ought to think about doing this. <laughs> you know, maybe I, I knew I'd come home and my, my nickname for my dad, he used to call me BB. And How come he called you BB? I have no idea where that came from. BB. I don't know if since I was a baby and he just said BB, you know, mm -hmm. he, he called me BB. So if he'd come home tired because he was a, worked for a construction company, he was a laborer, he'd come home and if he was tired, I said, hello, daddy. And he'd say, hello, BB. Well, I knew I was, everything's good. If I said, hello, Dad, and he said, hello, Gilbert, oh. and I said, wow. holy shit, you know, something's wrong, something's, wow. something's bothering him. If I said hello and he just said hello but wouldn't even look at me or he just ignored me, I knew my shit was in trouble for something I didn't do or something he was, ups he was upset at me for. So then, you know, I'd get out and cut the grass, pull the weeds, do whatever had to be done, you know. And you know, when somebody works that hard, like, you know, my grandfather dug ditches and he worked construction, and the days are short, man, and the weekends are short. So you look at it, you, you, he leaves in the morning, comes fucking back all muddy and dirty, yeah. eats, goes to sleep, and on the weekends, he didn't really do anything, and just go back to work again. And it's, there's no time for, you know, sitting around and playing catch or fucking... Tom. It's almost like that's like that's me telling you I love you. Like look what I'm doing for you. Like look like we're here. We're on we're, we're on this that. side, and I'm doing all this for you. So that's, yeah, brothers and sisters. Like, I'm, I'm an only child. I'm an See, only child. Uh, and on, on Saturdays, my dad would get up. My dad did all the all the shopping. So my dad would get up on Saturdays. He'd look at the papers and he did three or four markets to go buy and tomato sauce by the case. Everything by the case and had a little uh, cabinet. He did all that. Yeah. My mom never drove, you know. He he'd go do that, make sure everything was there, and every Saturday, shit, party pack sodas, <laughs> yep, party pack. Um, Bell, Spartan fight, they go to Spartan final. That's where everybody went back there because Bell they, they brand, didn't Costco or where Bell brand potato chips mm -hmm. and a case <laughs> of quartz for him, <laughs> <laughs> and he'd sit there. That's that would go during the week for him. Shit, so, man, that's. Those were the That's days. heavy duty, man. Yeah, he was hard work. I never knew him to take a vacation until after, uh, after he retired. He retired when they found cancer in his lungs, and he says, "Okay, now it's my turn." Did and, he smoke? Yeah, he did. Lucky strike, non filter. Fuck. But he was getting he, uh, even after his death. He got it. Uh, he worked as a kid. He worked in the mines, so he was getting a pension from the black lung, black lung oh. disease from from there. And uh, but he was a smoker. It didn't bother. him. But those were so in the in the mines. But where where, do you, where was that? Where did you grow up? Gamurco, New Mexico, which is just outside of Gallup, New Mexico, which yeah. is the biggest town right there. And he was a hero in the little town. I, I heard stories. Uh, matter of fact, I went into the bar the last time I was in Gallup a few years ago. He uh, there was a bar called the Tropics, and so I went in. His brother took us in there. My wife and myself. This is where your dad used to work Shit. as a kid and mm -hmm. hung out, and. He became a hero because he was 12 years old and he was a bar back. You know, he just hustled around in there and for tips, whatever they'd give him. Damn. There was a robber that came in. He saw the robber coming in, saw the gun. So he grabbed the money out of the cash register and then hid underneath the counter and closed the door behind him. 
So the robber got what he got. He left, and then he came out. And he says, "Hey, I got the money here." He became the <laughs> local hero, you know, and 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 he was good. So I'm down there, and I went in the bar, and the bartender looked, and he says, uh, "Excuse me," he says, "You guys aren't from around here. Very obvious, you know. What are you? Uh, what brings you to this bar?" I said, "My dad used to work here as a kid." Shit. He said, "Who's your dad?" And I said, "Evaristo Carrillo." He says, uh, "He says nah." He says, "We've owned this bar for 50 years. Your dad never worked here." I said, "I don't care how long you've owned it. My dad worked here." And he says, uh, "Well." No. He says, your dad didn't work here. Oh. He says, my dad has owned this. And I'm saying, I don't care what you say. Wow. He says, uh, right there. Here, here's a picture. He took this picture off the bar. He says, there's the owner of the bar right there. I said, well, I wouldn't know him. He bit me in the ass. I said, I just know my dad worked here. My wife got the picture. She went over to the pool table where there was light. And she hey. says, hey. <laughs> he look, was in it? Isn't this your dad? Oh. Mm. And I went up That's there and I crazy. looked. And before I committed, I called his brother over. I said, hey, you recognize anybody in this picture? He goes, hey, there's my brother. Wow. And my, I called up my mom immediately. He says, hey, I found a picture of my dad and up on the shit. wall of the tropics. How old was he? He was a teenager. Oh, then at the time that he took this picture, now he wasn't working there. Now he's a drinker. No. Oh. And, you know, and, and you see <laughs> in these old cowboy movies, belly up to the bar. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, the reason is they didn't have bar stools in. You just take your yeah. bonsai and go up to the bar. They had a bar rail there. Right. And so all these guys, my mom always said he was a dapper dresser. And you look at this picture, he's the best dressed Shit. guy there. Mm -hmm. And they're sitting there. So I said, Mom, I found a picture of him. And she says, was it winter or was it summer? I said, Mom, the it's taken inside the bar. How do I know? <laughs> she says, is he wearing a felt hat or a straw oh, hat? Oh, my God. Yeah. I said, straw. She says, oh, it was summer then. Yeah. So how did your dad get that, get that with the clothes? How did he get I have no like idea. That? Matter of fact, they just sent me a picture. It had to be somebody... Has to be somebody in the a they friend just, or family or something. They Watch just sent me a picture. Bill Gates over here. Watch out. Uh, Watch yeah. <laughs> no, but he had no social media yeah. at all. He had no no social media. So with this, he's yeah. back. Are you following him? Not yet. Not so yet. let's about talk to. about let's talk about TikTok. How long has yeah. TikTok been around? Find TikTok. I want to find his picture. It started as something else. Right? It was like musically. it was like uh, musically. Yeah, 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 yeah. I wasn't on it at that time. And then the only reason I made it was because it was like, uh, this is one character that I was seeing on Twitter. So I was like, oh, well, I want to make it on TikTok so I can see those. Oh. And my dad's Al Capone over here on the left. Oh. Uh. That's my dad. Listen, man, can, can, we, we, can you show that? Do you know that there's a... Do you know that there's a lot of pictures like this that... Yeah. Do you know that there's a lot of pictures like that from of of our culture that you see and you usually see them in other other families but there's a whole hidden heritage let's say a hidden heritage that we have of all of that stuff. I just got that picture up. yesterday. Amazing. Oh, wow. Yeah. Fucking amazing. Uh, and and later on in life now I'm working homicide and I start buying suits. I went to a place in Montebello and uh, little by the old Garmar Theater, just a little place. I went there to buy me a suit, and the guy, his name was Eddie Garcia. He says, you know, your dad used to come and have his suits made. He made used, my dad used to buy tailor-made suits How for about my dad. that? Yeah. He said, I want to make a tailor-made suit for you. I said, maybe when I get rich. Right now, I'm just buying the shit you got on the rack. But you know, that had to come from somewhere, man, because... To get a suit made was a big. It's a fucking big deal, like, because it's because it's different than than saying I need a suit, than someone who takes pride in in clothing. Yeah, he, say like he, I'm gonna have my suits made and my shirts made and and everything. That had to come from someplace. He was a dapper dude. Yeah, so that came from someplace. I don't know. Yeah, you know, I I, I can remember. I, he was probably a, a happy guy. You know, he's probably a partier when he was young because when I got out of the army, my first weekend home, I ran into some friends. And three of us on the block had all come back from the service within two weeks of each other. Mm. And he said, you know what? Tonight we're going to sit on the block and we're going to get wasted. So I said, all right, let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> so we went to the liquor store, bought a bunch of shit, and we drank. And I got blasted. <laughs> I made it home that night, block away, made it home. My sister told me the next morning, hey, how do you feel? I said, I feel fine. Why? She said, well, you were all wasted last night. I said, all right. She said, you remember? I said, remember what? Oh, well, shit. I fell asleep in the toilet. My mom was banging on the door. My dad finally came up there and said, Gilbert, open the door. I said, okay, I'll be right out. 
you know, and I came out, went to bed, nothing was said. My mom comes home from work that next day, and my mom says, hey, cabrón, que paso? And I said, mom, you know, hey, what? I got drunk last night with my, with my brothers out there. She says, well, you, you, you just wait till your dad gets home. I said, what's dad going to do? Is he going to put me over, my, over his knee and spank me, mom? Come on. I just got out of the Army. I've been to Vietnam. I'm a man now, mom. Shit. What's it, what's it going to do to me? So I wasn't afraid. My dad, I saw my dad driving up in his truck, and my heart started pounding. <laughs> running. And so he came in the house, just walked straight into the bedroom, and my mom says, your dad wants you. I walked in there, and I said, yes, dad. He says, close the door. And him and my mom and myself Fuck. are in the room, and he says, what happened last night? That is very simple. Tommy, Beto, and myself, we all just got out. We decided we were going to get drunk, and we drank. He says, you can't be driving my car like that because I had taken off in the car. Right. I said, Dad, I didn't. When I knew we were going to do that, I drove the car back, parked it, and then I walked back. And he said, oh, okay, no problem. He says, good. Welcome home. Mm -hmm. And my mom says, you did? Why don't you tell him I used to leave and not come home for the weekend? And I said, Mom. And he goes, I ain't so cool. I said, Mom, he's not mad at me. It's okay. Yeah, what the? So that's the first time I learned that my dad used to take off on Fridays, maybe not come home till awesome. Sunday. You know how fucking hard that is to do? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's not that hard it is to leave on Friday. And come, you know, my grandfather would be in the car drinking, and he was like, hey, my grandpa, go get him. And I would say, my grandma wants you. Tell her the fuck this. I said, all right. And he, he sat out there till like 11 from like 3.30 to 11. And uh, he ate, and my grandma made chile that was like 20 times hotter than any of the mm. fucking shit, just so that he would learn, you know. He'd want to eat, and you'd see him there, fucking sweating, you know, <laughs> 11.30 eating, and, you know, like, all right, motherfucker. You can sit out there for drinking for seven hours, but then you're going to have to eat this night yeah. 20 times stronger than anything I've ever made. <laughs> oh, that's good stuff. It's good, man. It's good. Yeah. So, so Leo, um, let's go through your TikTok uh, lineage, Jay, because, yeah. you know, if you, I mean, imagine that someone can could make a living, Gil, you know, off of social media. That's what Damn. these about are doing. Yeah, well, I'm not smart enough to comprehend huh? this. Shit. So it was called Musically before TikTok. It was Musically, then. yeah. I made it. I, I I've been on it for like a year and a half now. And when I made it, I did one video. I was working at a TV station. I used a green screen there, and and this one video got me some traction. It got me like from 12 followers to like 4,000 overnight. And so at wow. that point, I was like, okay, like, uh, you know, I, I I I always thought I was funny. I always thought I could do stuff like that. And so then I kept going, kept going, kept going, and then I hit. 10,000, 30,000, 90,000, 400,000 and like last week I hit a million. Wow. Uh, and it's like and and so 5 months ago I hit like 700,000 and 5 months ago I decided I was living in Reno, I decided to move over here because I was like let me just, you know what, like let me just go for it. If it doesn't work, then I'll go I'll get a job. I'll go back to Hanford, I'll go to Reno, wherever. But like, I don't want to regret it. And, and you know, let me go try it. And so that's when I got here. And I got here with $2,000 and nothing else. I got an apartment with, with two of my friends. Uh, and, and that's it. And, and, and I was like, all right, like I have a month to see how much money I can make on TikTok. And I'll just play it like that. I'll see how much money I can get paid from the app. And then if it doesn't work, I have a month to get a job. You know, so I'm like, all right, good, good, good. And then the first month, I get a, I get my first major sponsorship, like a beer company. And so that one, that was like, all right, that pays two well, months. How did of that rent. happen? Who, who, who came to you with that? Because I think the, I, the, wanted, I want to know the the ad agency hit up my manager, and they. And so we have they, a manager? No, pues que, que, what, what you know this uh, was, bro? Come on, uh, now. line two. <laughs> uh, that so th- so they hit up Esteban at that time, and and they because uh, uh, his emails in my in my description on everything or, and so they hit him up and they do their little negotiation stuff and then uh, we booked it and I was like alright two months of rent and so that's how it's been I've been there five months and how it's going is like I'm like alright another sponsorship another two three months of rent you know and so I'm like and so right now like last week I booked my latest one that I, I'm gonna put together this week and then it comes out like in two weeks and then the way that it works is I'll get paid like a month or two after it goes live on my TikTok so then it's like alright like so now at this point I've had like seven sponsorships, and and I'm getting my first payment for my first one three months ago, like this week. And so I'm like, all right, all right. But I'm very like I got you know I got that like eviction trauma. So I yeah. so I have everything like I I just put it away right away, and I'm like, all right, like I don't see myself as like I made this much this pay period. 
I made this much and this is rent and it's going to go right here in this envelope, you know, until I can really feel like. Without getting too personal, I'm just curious, how do they pay? Do they pay by the amount of people that hit on your, view your, your TikTok? They, uh, or do they you pay you in advance? Set, set fee, this is it? It's a flat rate. Yeah, why don't you go live on my account and we can go live right now? Yeah. I, and you know. show yourself and show us, but just talking. All right, bet, bet, Give bet, it to Grant. He can cover, I'll do all three of us. All right, bet, bet. You've never gone live? This is first time going live. This is first time bullshit, eh? <laughs> well, you got a filter too, on. Okay, you really got a filter on. I do? Take, yeah. Well, first of all. I don't all, want people to think I got really nice skin. There it is. Well, no, no. We'll take it, all the filters off. Yeah, yeah. I, just, I have that one that makes your verga look bigger. That's all I <laughs> I need that one, bro. <laughs> uh, all right. So, so. Yeah, so. Okay, let's talk TikTok. It's, it's just been, it's, it's crazy. It, it out of nowhere and and i was studying to be a news reporter that's what happened is like that's what i my first dream was like i wanted to act so i watched george a lot i was watching like my favorite said, movie for that. a long time <laughs> my favorite movie for a long time was swing vote remember oh, swing yeah. vote that yeah. was my favorite movie we for did a that long in time New Mexico. Yep. because it was like it was a, it was a movie of uh of uh, uh it had news stuff the which guy, i was really into mm -hmm. And then it had George Lopez in it. So it was like the best thing for me is like journalism and George Lopez. So that's what I was like. I want I was like, I can't be an actor because I live in Hanford three and a half hours away. That's too far. And logistically, like when I was little, I, I never thought I would drive. I never thought I'd have a license. I was just very, I was just scared of everything, you know. And so I was like, I'm never going to make it to L.A. I'm never going to actually have the chance to be there. And so, and so I just, I was like, you know what? I'll be a news reporter. It's in Fresno, 30 minutes away. And then, um, and then I'm, I was doing YouTube videos. I was doing Facebook videos, and then nothing ever worked until TikTok a year and a half Shit, ago. It's crazy. Man. And so it's been a year and a half, and it changed my life like completely. Because now I'm, you know, not to you know be all on some sappy shit, but like I'm sitting with the guy who I just was the legend the leader the must yeah and i know and i know like i know he gets it i know Let's that talk more ah, <laughs> oh, <you're not> <laughs> no but i know like you know people like do that all all the time they say all these things and like i, I don't know what that's like but i'm like bro like for me it's like it's crazy what tiktok has done for my life is crazy it's amazing it changed me, it's, a, everything. it's amazing yeah it is it's amazing that all this could happen and that be. i think it keeps kids out of tr could keep kids out of trouble and I think it's perfect because, like, during the pandemic, I feel like I can't imagine, like, what it would have been like for me if I was a kid in the pandemic. So I think about, like, they had this opportunity to see. It, it, was, it made people have the opportunity to be stars, to, to, to have their own following, have, have their own everything. And so, and for me, like, I'm just random from Hanford, California, some little cow town. Right. And, and it gave me this opportunity. And, and, I, and that's what me, I like. Don't show yourself? I'm showing. I just showed you right now. All right. Um, show guilt too, and uh, yeah. <laughs> so hey, so this is how crazy it is. So Floyd Mayweather, fifty and 0, 27 knockouts, fights a you a YouTube. What is that guy? Influencer? Oh, is he a boxer? Paul, what is Logan, he? Paul, Logan Paul, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Logan Paul. Yeah. They fought. Fucking made. I don't know how much money. Hundred million dollars or some bullshit. And uh, those two guys would never fight. One six four, and one's five eight, and. He lasted all eight rounds, three minute rounds. It's incredible and amazing. It's an, and everything you're you're saying about your shock at the way everything's turned around. That's exactly because it was just in January that this documentary came out, and my life flipped. I, I yeah. never would have anticipated this in my life, especially this old. Mm. Did anybody ever see that shit coming, man? Like the all the all the advances in technology. I. Pendejo, I, I did it. I was still with solar power. I, nah. My TV doesn't work. <laughs> I had to open the fucking shades so the TV works. But, I mean, it's it's every, every, it's everything in everybody's phone. You look at Star Trek and they got to be talking into the thing. It's like we're way beyond that shit. Yeah. People meet. They meet. They fall in love. They break up by text messages. Some people don't even hardly even talk anymore. And in a way, it, it it's helping society. And in a way... Because kids do everything by the computer, I think that that they don't write letters anymore. They don't they don't really know how to no. to write. But then a guy, you know, kids can make a living doing, you know, TikTok. My my, my daughter does it doing TikTok. Yeah. It yeah, it, it's crazy. Just uh, 
it just and, and for me like I feel like I, I it gave me a family because I even just last month they flew me out to uh, I got flown to uh, El Paso just to get drunk uh, so I, I I got some friends out of it you know so I got friends there I got people watching from all over the place and what do you mean that, they flew you who flew you some random people that like they were just like can you come kick it with us we'll get your plane your your home for that for that night I was like bad like yeah of course no shit, you, well you tell them next time so you I got went. a best friend named Gil yeah, Carrillo yeah, exactly. <laughs> Gallup, I'll go to that bar right there right? yeah yeah <laughs> so I went yeah so I feel like so when I compare it to because two two years ago about two years ago before I moved away to Nevada for a year I was sleeping in my car for the last few weeks of my semester wow. and and I was and I was struggling my mom was in the hospital I was sleeping uh-huh. in the car I could I, I was working two jobs and and just trying to take care of a few things and and then and that so now it's like even like my friends today like so that I've made now is crazy because like I can't even begin to understand them like you don't like you don't understand how much love I have for you like I have so much love for you because of like comparing today to two years ago it just doesn't make sense Incredible. and, and so every all of this stuff is just like it has been just so so deep for me such a big deal for me just to be to to be here like that doesn't make sense uh you know and and they did a i used to work at univision in fresno i I worked there as a as a photographer and editor for almost three years and they just did a story on me the other night they talked about you a little bit um motherfucker uh, you know, he said they did a story on me, but they talked about you. They a talked about bit. you. Uh, like, I don't know. I don't know why. <laughs> but that's. But it's it, it's impressive, man. I mean, you know, it's the only child scared of things. I was an only child scared of everything, and, and, that, now, and that's what I talk about when I talk about here. you. Is that like I uh, watching the show uh, as a little boy? I was like, bro, like he makes it funny to be an only child he makes it funny to have a messy mom you know and he makes it funny to have your dad not there like and so when i was watching it i was like bro like and it was like it was like according to jim reba george lopez seinfeld and so it was like that's me up there like that's that's me and 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 not only is it like he's brown too but like his mom is like my mom like they're both just different people Mm -hmm. on in that show and his dad is just not there. And right. so I was like, damn, like that, that's funny. Like that's, it's nice. And I was, I felt hopeful. And so that's what gave me my, like, that's what, you know, we, you talked about like personality earlier. And I was like, that's what gave me that part of my personality right. was like, I could, you know, like that, like that, that's how I kind of coped with that time of my life because I was, we were, me, my mom and I were going from different home to different home, di- some staying in someone's garage staying and and, and and during that time it was like i was i couldn't really make a solid group of friends because we were just moving so much different schools and 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 you know I, well, I, how come you guys were moving just because income or financial yeah, just had to financial around, stuff yeah. and 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 you know and my mom you know she i think like she struggled a lot she was a foster child herself uh, right. and and she she never met her dad and uh, her mom passed away when like one night when she was like 12 like overnight and so I always just like, and so that's why I gave a lot of, I, I just had a lot of grace growing up because I was like, you know what, I'm fine. Like, I don't right. need that. I, I never asked her for anything. I don't I never asked my dad Shit. for anything because my dad was, he was living in Mexico. And sometimes he'd be, he, he would live in Mexico. He'd come to hand for work in the fields, save some, and then go live in Mexico. And, and so the fact that like him never saying, I love you, I was like, you know what, like, I get wow. it. Like you don't have to say it. I, I I understand. Like you're struggling right now, and like so when he would be drinking, when I would see him and he'd be like drunk or whatever, I'd be like, I get it. I get it. It's hard. It's hard for you. Shit, and, I never yeah. got it. Yeah. Wow, and man. That's I, I just had that grace, and so now as an adult, I've been trying to keep that grace going. Um, and I feel like finally, with with the season that I'm in of my life, I feel like that's what that grace was for. Like that's why I needed to just sit there and be quiet and just pray and just be like god like whatever like whatever you're doing like I'll, I'll I'll be here and like I'm just going to not see that I'm just going to pretend that I that I that that that's not happening and I'm just going to try to keep my eyes locked How old are you? I'm 26 now. Wow. Yeah, uh, it's a lot to happen early. You know, I think it's and, and making it yeah. the way he is. That's perfect. I think it's impressive. Are we, yeah. are we ended or are you Do we end it? Uh I can end it. No, right no, now. whatever you want to do. Yeah, I'm just No, no, but 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 it really is because you know it's like um, I looked at TV, but I didn't have an interactive thing. Like you can, I mean, I sent him a DM and I said, "Hey, man, let's try to let's try to do something." I don't even think he was in LA yet, 
but mm. and he, he answered back. So is it easy to get a hold of somebody? <laughs> Absolutely. You see your yes. DMs. I don't look at mine, but but um, but somebody is just a short message away, man. Yeah. You know, everybody. Everything seems so attainable now because I I, I mean think about you, but I think about this guy. Uh, his name's Nick Coletti, and he would do uh, Vine back then. And uh, he's a comedian. He he he's. Vine, uh, explain Vine to, to Vine you. was the hottest me, thing before remember. TikTok. So it was like little little videos, and people would do like little skits. And, and so um, and uh, so, but that that app is gone now. But I think about uh, I was really into Nick back then a few years ago. Do you know who that guy is, Grant? Uh, no, I no. Yeah, he he does stand up now. As soon as you said Nick, I was first thing I was thinking Ned Coletti. He's a doctor. Ned Coletti, the doctor. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do we uh, have any more beer? Or one more, one more, guys. Yeah. Is there any more? No. Nah. Should we get some more? Uh, yeah. Story out there? Order yeah. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm good. I'll be. Yeah. I'll be half. I'm going, half. To, I'm going to the Dodger game. Oh, you are. Oh, oh yeah. Man. I'm going to the Dodger game tonight. Um, yeah, so I think about like Nick Coletti. I think like I was watching him a long time mm -hmm. ago, and then he DM me mm -hmm. one day, and I was like. Bro, it was the same thing. It's like I like I was watching you, and 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 the thing that I always think about because uh, I'm just <laughs> emotional is I'm like, damn, like I was watching you while I was going through this particular season. It's crazy, dude. And so now I'm like, damn, like I, it's just crazy to see like while that stuff was going on, like this was already written. Is how I feel. Like this 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 day was already written for me. That's exactly just at a different different age. I would have never in my wildest imagination thought that I'd be sitting as a guest on the George Lopez Oh My God uh, High podcast uh, to be have him have someone of his stature call me up and then on. get to meet him and know him and and Shit, we and talked I, the first time on the phone like for 25 minutes, yeah. and I knew we were gonna we were already friends. But I was mean, like, yeah, oh, this, I feel like I've known this dude forever this already. It's good. Good. We good. Yeah, we're good. No, I mean, you know, I mean, whichever one. This is uh, the. You ever try this one? The hibiscus? That one's sour. But I mean, you know, all all this is like brought us together. Yeah. Did you did you uh, save it or put it up there? Is it on there? Here, I'll save it. Um, so, I mean, fuck, it's crazy, man. And it is, and I'm so grateful. Jack, so, so, what was your life? A little bit of what it was like before January. Like what was your what were your days like? Cause you, you you know you're a great family guy. You travel. Yeah, you do stuff I, with your family. I, I, I do stuff with my family. Uh, last year, the the year preceding it was not a good year for me. Uh, I had a lot of medical issues going on with my lungs. You know, I had mm -hmm. shit going on with my lungs. They, I was in and out of the hospital a couple of times. Hopefully, they took care of it. Then right. They said, "Well, you got a leaky valve over here." And I said, I ah, put some chicle, do something. Right. And so we're still going through that. So I. Oh, well, you're I was, still going. You're still yeah. going through that thing. And and so I was just really, kind of like a homebody. You know, didn't go out that way. You couldn't go anywhere anyway. You know. Uh, right. So right. My my anniversary, uh, which was a big one this year, last year, was the day after Christmas. It was my fiftieth wedding anniversary, and we stayed home. Amazing man. You know, my kids, God bless them, they, they went ahead, they decorated my house like if it was uh, the movie It's a Wonderful Life. Yeah. And that's my wife's favorite movie of all time. You know, if you were a kid growing up around my house, don't let her get, put her hands on you when that movie time comes on because you're going to sit there and watch it. She forced <laughs> you to watch it. And uh, they decorated my house. We were gone for a couple of hours. They decorated the house. They had a candlelight dinner for us when Amazing. we came home. So it, we both just cried you know it was, it was beautiful and it's the best anniversary we've ever had which really in the long run because my good friend uh, Jimmy Philippan over at Stevens we had been planning since the year before a big right. bolote you know, we're yeah 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 big thing so this saved me saved me a bunch of money uh, but so we didn't do much last year it was just a routine mundane life I was retired uh, my wife has never worked so when we stood home did so nothing you, yeah they were doing as you were doing, right? Family yeah. comes over, you were doing the pandemic, trying to stay safe, and then exactly. this thing comes out in January, and it's... My whole life has changed. Wow. Whole life has changed. For the good. I, I'm, not, I'm not complaining at all, and I don't think that I've changed as a person. I, I have to remain humble. You know, I have to remain... No, never, you're humble, yeah. Never forget where you came from. You know what's interesting about it? You know, I was, now that we know each other and you watch, you watch the... Night Stalker series that with no social media at that time, and we're talking about how you would take somebody downtown 
to go look at mug shots or they had a, a artist. I don't know where they found the fucking artist uh, uh, that would draw people. But yeah. it kind of didn't look like him and then it kind of looks like him, right? It kind of looks like somebody and then it's not, you know, it's not like they do now. Yeah. All, all you're really looking at is just eyes, figures. Eyes, lips, yeah. and nose. That, that's... Mm. And uh, going downtown to look at pictures, thousands of fingerprints, like you said, what they call it, the three S's? The, uh, uh, scotch, snitch, and shoe leather. <laughs> just no substitute for hard work. Nothing. That was it. Although I never did become a scotch drinker. I, 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 was, I was a tequila drinker. Is that bar still open in Chinatown that you guys used to go to? Where, Amy slide, where they would slide the door and go. No, that uh, one's gone. No. That was Flores. That one's gone. Uh, but Emi Lu's the one on top, as far as I know, still is. I don't go down to Chinatown anymore. Too far to Nobody drive. Nobody goes down to Chinatown. Too far to drive. I went to go get a haircut one time at Chinatown. I cut all my hair off. Mm. Uh, and uh, that motherfucker cut it so short that the fucking sun hit me. I was crying on my way to the car. <laughs> Parked across the street. The sun is like, ah! Because, you know, I had hair and then I didn't have hair. That shit, I don't know what he got to. But I was ready to be taking Kung Fu. I mean, just on the way to the run into the car like that. Like, just, yeah. Oh, you see a barber pole, you know to go in. Yeah, it was, it was good. And every day it gets different, huh? Like, t- like the guys drawing this picture for, like, you see a lot sure. of artists. You see, I'm sure people send stuff. I got a guy that draws pictures. They send it to us. You see them all the time. So you met this artist. Where's this guy, in Tennessee? He's in Tennessee, all through DM. That's what started it. And now we're face Chicano guy or a white dude? No, white guy. And uh, just a different guy, and I'm grateful. I had somebody contact me. Uh, said, now that you're doing all this stuff, you know, I see you're getting bigger and bigger. You need a uh, guard dog. I raise and train guard dogs. <laughs> and I said, and he says, it won't cost you anything. I said, thank you, but no thanks. Yeah. My wife would never allow that in my house. You know, she'd be yeah. scared to death. And so although you train him to be good, I said, no, thanks. Thank you very much. And he was raised right there in East L.A. Matter of fact, he used to go, he says, I live right there by Beverly and Bradshaw right on the Montebello East LA border. I said they had a Taco Village right there. That's before King Taco came out. Shit, that's and, right. And, and Taco Village made the best tacos. And we'd, we'd go down there and grab tacos. He says, I used to ride my bike there all the time. I said, well, there we go. And now we can meet there for lunch you one see, day. Yeah. You said, how long you been in the house that you've been in? For 47 years. Shit! 47 years. Wow. You know, and, and I'm so proud. I wow, tell you, man. I'll tell you how much I owe on it now. I only owe... Uh, less than $60,000, and people say, what do you mean it's not paid for? You've been there all those years. I said, wait a minute. I'm the only one that worked. So there was seconds, oh, wow. you know, a lot of stuff. You you wanted this, you wanted that. I had to borrow money against my house. So now, wow. uh, and I'll have it paid off within three years, two, three years, and I'll have it paid off. What do you think, would you do something else if somebody presented, like, you know how they do, like, law and order, like, you know, they do based on, on something. If somebody presented you an idea for a show about, you know, your life as a detective, not a documentary, but maybe a like Blue Bloods or sure, something like sure. that. Would you would you be would you consider that? I, I think I'd be very uh, I, I'd be very interested in doing something like that uh, because there's nothing in I mean social. There's nothing like crime. I mean you see people. Sure. I mean you know there's a lot of clearly a lot of issues racially, but but crime is is what is looks like it's fascinating people uh, right now. That's what it looks like, and I'm hoping that. Uh, somebody, you know, wants to do something, I'd be more than happy to listen to anybody that wanted to do something All like right. that. And, and, and I don't think you should be flying to El Paso to get drunk. Yeah, that's... Because you know what? You, I don't know if you can really... I mean, you're a police officer. Would you really trust somebody that you never met? I I wouldn't. Oh, I wouldn't. You, you know, there'd have to be something more substantial than just come on out and, you know, I, because of the trust I factor. Think, I, I think people have yeah. to be safe. I think people have to yeah. be safe, right? Like, guys, social media people and influencers and people like that, that, well, yeah, that, I went because they they were they were he like does like influencer stuff too. Yeah. He's like trying to do that, so I was like, yeah, yeah, but no, nah, I wouldn't. I, I and I did is there stock an, a little. Is bit. there an influencer Comic Con? Not that I know of. I or not that I've gone to the level of. Grant, I I know that there's like call up call up fucker Radisson. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, uh, no, I know that there's like in October. <laughs> I was part of a, a an event that TikTok put on. Uh, it was like a Latino TikToker, TikTok creator event, and that was like a virtual one. So I think this year is I'm hoping that it'll be like a in person thing. Sure. And and because uh, yeah, it would be like like VidCon, like one of those right. YouTube ones. Yeah. So. But. So they so they do well. They do adult 
films. They don't know if they do. They they could do that. We're gonna we're not we're gonna wrap it up. But then you you went to a crime con, right? You I went, went to, to crime con. Yes. Was that the week, weekend that there was the shooting out there? Uh, just before I got out of town, I got out of Dodge just in time. I left there on Monday, and I think the shooting was on Thursday. Mm-hmm. Wednesday or Thursday. So explain to everybody what this is the first time you went to something like this. That's I didn't a, even know they had it. A crime, I didn't know. I didn't know they had it. They called me a, just a, a, a doctor of uh, forensic psychology or police psychology. So he, uh, I had met him. He had seen me on the Doctor Oz show, and he had been on the Doctor Oz show. Well, I haven't seen him on the Doctor Oz show. Yeah, I did the Doctor Oz show, and and so he went ahead and uh, invited me out to lunch by the house. We went out to lunch and we talked. And he had done some work uh, with our profiler from the department before. So I met him, had lunch, then he called me up uh, after we left. He says, hey, you know, they got this crime con thing going over there, and I knew nothing about it. He says, would you mind if I just submitted your name? He says, I think they'd love you. And I said, go ahead, submit my name. Next thing I know, they're inviting me out there. They, they're they all excited. They, they pay want, you? Uh, no, this one was for free. All I told them was, okay, if I'm going to go, you got to fly me out first class. I'm not going to go back in the coach because me and coach <laughs> is like a 10-pound chorizo and a 5-pound skin. You know, so it doesn't work. So you fly me out there. You can pay for everything once I get there. And that's it. I'll do it for you guys. So we did it. It worked out. I'm so glad I went. They were so good, so professional. Right. The way they that's did good. everything, awesome. the way it went on. Uh it was just first class operation. And, and and people that were there were paying money to who else was there? Like who were the other guests? Uh, Doctor Phil was there. Uh, what her name? Helen Grace, I think the the attorney. The the oh Nancy Grace. Nancy Grace. Yeah. She she was on there. Uh, Helen Grace is the chocolates. Helen Grace. <laughs> <laughs> Nancy Grace, they have fuck. She have a big 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 nail as a cover. Yeah. She's white in the back. Uh, and then they when had she backs uh, up the they had the guy that plays Homicide Hunter. Uh, he's an actor. He was there. Who's the homicide hunter? That that dude, Joe, uh, Joe somebody? Uh, uh, Joe Kenda. Well, Joe this Kenda? is a guy that plays, portrays Joe Kenda. Oh, uh, Carl, Carl Marino. Carl Marino. Marino yeah. Nice guy. Both him and his wife. I sat and had dinner with him one night. Nice, nice, nice people. Uh, there was one that I missed, okay? They were having a speaker there. Uh... There was a daughter of the BTK killer. Ooh. And she was going to speak at 10 o'clock Sunday morning. Holy and I wanted shit. I wanted to see her because I had been called while I was still working cop out here. They had called and asked me if I'd go consult with them. Because of my ex- expertise, they wanted me to go consult what with them. What year was that? Uh, that was... Do you know who the BTK killer is? No. Bind them, torture, kill them. And Dude. that was in the 90s. Early 2000, whenever they arrested him, because one of the most notorious serial killers of all time in Wichita, Kansas. In Wichita, Kansas, they they asked me if I'd go consult with them. I said yes. Well, three weeks before I'm due out there, shit, they they made the arrest. So I called them out. I said, hey, well, I guess all bets are off. You don't need me anymore. Congratulations. Good luck. And they said, oh no, 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 that was the arrest is made, but we still have a trial to go through. We want to talk to you about what to prepare for, what wow. can we expect ahead. And not only that, we've scheduled a seminar, which we're hoping you're willing to put on a class for us. So I went back there anyway. So now I wanted to see what the daughter had to say. I'd never spoken with her. And I, it was very interesting to me. Unfortunately, I'm there on Saturday, and I had to go to their dinner. I kind of snuck out of their dinner because it was boring. And I went over to the bar to get a glass of wine. And I went to go get it, and they said, I was by myself, so they're going to sit me in the corner in the back over yep, here on the sure. side. Mm-hmm. And then as I'm walking through, three ladies who had paid the big bucks mm-hmm. to be a VIP saw me and they said, hey, where are you guys? Well, I'm going to go over here and have a glass of wine. She said, well, who are you with? I said, by myself. Why don't you join us? So I sat down with those ladies, and at 1 o'clock in the morning when the bar closed, they said, okay, that's it. You know, And you uh, missed it in the morning? Yeah, I got up the next morning. I said, "No, no, discretion being the better part of valor. I'm staying in the room. I ain't going out right You're now. I'm too tired." One. On. I wasn't hungover. I was just, just tired. tired. Yeah, and I knew I had to speak that afternoon, so I didn't want to go out. But that the daughter would be very. Interesting. That's a big. That's a yeah. big kind of get. So the BTK guy was. He wanted to be a police officer. He was a deacon for his church. He was a 
Boy Scout master. He was an animal control employee. Uh, the nice neighbor nobody ever would. And have he was by it. the book. Like if he yeah. went and he he would be the guy that says. You know, this is not to regulation, and you're like, man, does that fucking guy have anything yeah. better to do? Like, he he was one of those guys that would use his authority. You know, it's like like a yeah. security guard that yeah. really wanted to be a police officer, and he's not, mm-hmm. but he fucking fucks with everybody, and he became that he, guy. He was just a Harvey Milk close guy when he's not doing working, and then all of a sudden to find out he is who he is was a shock to everybody, including his family. So yeah. I wanted to listen to his daughter, but I missed her. That's the only one that I really missed, but oh. the. And he went dormant for about thirty years, almost thirty years. He went. He he was, which which would have meant that he would have uh, essentially gotten away with exactly with it all. Only because he started messing with the computer, he would send messages. I'm going to start again, you know, and that's what got him caught. And, and like ego, and which you probably see a lot of uh, in in social media, where everybody everybody has to think they're more important than somebody else, yeah. right? Yeah. Because that's kind of social media it feeds insecurity this dude went away for that long and didn't like that they didn't what put him on the list with like some of the most notorious yeah, he guys. wanted he wanted attention he still he wanted, wanted attention he was out completely safe out never they never probably would have not got him then he came back in a time where there's now well, let's not say they went and got him they called me to consult oh yeah by the way caught him <laughs> But what were the clues, though? There was no... You know, I was the only guy from outside their department that got to go. They took me into what we call the war room. They had evidence up on the walls and maps and all this stuff. It was fascinating. Fascinating stuff. They had just like a room with all the clues and pictures and things? Yeah. 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 That'd be you up there on the wall, Cabron. You go to El Paso to go get drunk. <laughs> I know. Be careful. Like, huh? They'll see you throw That's them high heels out with lipstick. Like, <laughs> all, all up here. Yeah. Kissed off. Get <laughs> The, all right. So, yeah. So, thank you guys. Hey, Grant, how do we do, man? All right? Great. Give us to go to see the Dodgers. No, I don't care about seeing the Dodgers. I tell you, after we get off the air, I'll tell you where I got to go. Okay. Bye. Cool. Let's go to the bathroom. Yeah, I do. <laughs> all right. You're always welcome back. All right. Thank you, thank nice you, to see you, you here, brother. Very good to see you. I think it's fun, huh? It was a pleasure meeting you. Let's do it. Hey, come back. Come back over here for the same guy like the three of us. I'm down. We'll bring Be Real with the Pichi Marijuana. Put him right there. All right, thank you guys. See you next time. Anyway, I got hot.